Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Whatever time y'all are tuning in, I certainly appreciate y'all are here. Today's video, guys, we're going to be opening up three more packages. Uh, this ain't going to be a very long video today. Uh, I got things I got to do to get done here in the shop. I got more knives to upload for the uh, auction coming up on September 10th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. That's, a, that's this coming Tuesday. Uh, got to upload the rest of the knives today. I gotta take pictures of those, put uh, descriptions out for them. But uh, this knife here that I got from, uh, I believe it's Mr. Morgan, Marshall. Uh, this knife here is been on my mind. It all it needs to be cleaned up. You see how rusty it is. But we're gonna take that uh, wrapping off the handles. I'm not gonna do the handles today, but I am gonna clean it up. It just needs a good, good cleaning is all it does. Needs, and uh, it's a good looking knife. It really is. And this is a uh, hammer brand from uh, 1945 to 1955, and I'll show you up close when I'll be cleaning it up. But, and uh, Tuesday, guys, I'm gonna go on a little knife hunt to some pawn shops, and then I'm gonna go meet um, Wade and Lamar and Mr. Glenn over there in Hawkinsville, Georgia. Can't wait for that. And then that Tuesday night, we're having an auction for Tunnels of Towers. So it's, it's a very exciting week, very busy week. Um, but we're going to get a lot of stuff done here in the shop today also. We're going to be putting up the Zippo display case. We're going to be uh, hanging a lot more signs. So there's a lot going on, and I've got a, uh, some very disappointing news. I mean, it ain't very bad, but my knives didn't come in. <laughs> my exclusive knives. Uh, I went to the post office and uh, expecting them to be there, and they wasn't. It's no big deal. They're in Columbus, Georgia right now. So they should make their way over to Ellaville today, and they should be delivered tomorrow if everything works right. <laughs> and you should be seeing that knife Tuesday morning when I'm out knife hunting. So I cannot wait. It's been a while since I've been on a little knife hunt, but it's uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be real fun. Anyway, these packages, guys, uh, two of them come from Kentucky. One of them come from Houstonville. I believe I'm saying that right. The other one from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Both of them from Kentucky. And this one here comes all the way from uh, Martinez, Georgia. How about that? From Mr. Bruce. So we're going to be opening these up. They're they're real small. So first one, guys, we're going to be opening all the way from uh, Houstonville, Kentucky. Let's see, let's see what they see. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I know who this is now. It's Mr. Dwayne Clark over at Clark's Kentucky Knives. Check all this out, y'all. Wow. Ain't this awesome? He sent me some bookmarks, too. If y'all haven't seen old uh, Clark's Kentucky Knives, he, he sent me a huge package before. And it just had all kinds of stuff that I'm going to be, some of it I'm going to be using in here in the knife shop. But he's just a, just got a heart of gold. He really does. And look at here. He sent me a, a SD Classic with uh, Smokey the Bear on it. Dwayne, I love this, man. I love this. Clark's Kentucky Knives. Thank you so much for this, buddy. I absolutely love this. Love it, man. I love these little SD classics because they are just great to put on your keychain. Matter of fact, this one is going to go on my keychain, buddy. Thank you so much. I love it. I can take the red one off and give it to someone I come across. Anyway, guys, if I remember right, this is made from olive wood from Israel. And uh, when I was on my first med float, I actually went to uh, Israel and visited Jesus' tomb in, in, in Jerusalem. Great experience. Something I'll never forget. And I also got to visit the Wailing Wall. And your head's got to be covered. And luckily, I wore a uh, 
jacket that day. It was kind of cool and, and, and misty. Um, it, it missed it on and off, but we got to tour the whole city of Jerusalem. And, um, but anyway, the Wailing Wall, I was lucky enough to wear my coat and that my, my collar. This was back in 1990. It was a, a hood. I unzipped it and put the hood over my head. I was able to visit the Wailing Wall. So it was a very, very awesome experience. And I don't know if y'all know this or not, but at the Wailing Wall, you're allowed to uh, write a little note and roll it up and stick it in the cracks of the wall. So I've got a note over there. And uh, I don't remember what I wrote. It was, it's been a long time ago. But uh, I do have a note in the Wailing Wall in Israel. Ain't that cool? But uh, great experience. You know, the Marine Corps, when I first decided to sign up, when I was, uh, I actually signed up in, uh, when I was 17 years old. And uh, I was on the delayed entry program and went in shortly after I turned 18 and about a month after I graduated from high school, spent six years and I grew up fast, went to war, went on two Mediterranean floats, went to the Black Sea, went to Bulgaria, Romania, Turkey, France, Italy, uh, Liberia, Israel, Spain, Went all over the med. Greece, great experience I'll never forget. You know, I've, I've also, you know, I've been to Kuwait and Saudi Arabia and uh, just awesome. You know, when, when you sign up something like that with your young, you have no idea the impacts that one decision can make on the rest of your life. And uh, I wouldn't want to do it again, but I'm so glad I'd done it when I was young. <laughs> It was uh, just a great experience, and it 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 made me grow up fast. You know, I was, both 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 my sons were born at Camp Lejeune, at the uh, Naval Hospital, um, and so was my grandson. Same hospital, you know. It's just amazing, and he lives right back here, behind me now. And it's just a uh, it's just a great great story. Um, thank y'all for letting me share that. But uh, this. These crosses is what brought back the memories that I just shared, guys. I'm sorry. But it is the olive, if I remember right, it is olive wood from Jerusalem. And I will absolutely cherish these. I'll give some of them away. He sent me five. I'm actually going to give one to everybody that I eat with over in, in Hawkinsville. I absolutely love these. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you for all these great gifts. And I appreciate this right here. Sure do. It's the Lord's Prayer right here. Awesome. I want to thank Mr. Dwayne all the way from Houstonville, Kentucky. His second package. 507 miles away from Ellaville, Georgia. Dwayne, buddy, appreciate the crosses, buddy. I appreciate those bookmarks. Thank you so much for thinking of me, man. God bless you, buddy. Appreciate you supporting the channel, man. Hey guys, the next one comes all the way from McFadden from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Knife Doctor, first off, thank you for your service. Appreciate that art. I've enclosed a knife I picked up and I hope you can work your magic and put it in your online collect auction. I started collecting EDC one hand opening knives and multi tools when I became a police officer. Brands like Gerber, Cricket or CRKT and Cold Steel. I'm retired from law enforcement, now a college instructor, and decided to broaden my collection to various brands and styles. I know no collection is complete without a couple of case knives, and I came across your channel while doing some research. Now that's pretty cool, buddy. And Art, thank you for your service, buddy, for being a police officer and a first responder. Thank you so much for that. I picked up this knife at a my local flea market. Can you tell me how old it is? I paid $15 for it. Did I get a good deal? One end is a tad loose. If it's too rough for the auction, part it out. I'll keep a lookout for more of them for your auctions. Thanks for having a great channel. Congra congratulations on your one-year mark. I always look forward to your newest episodes. Stay safe. Art.
in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Art, thank you so much for this, man. Appreciate it so much. Let's, we're going to take a look at it real quick. There's a little Barlow. I'm going to say it's an Imperial without even opening it up yet. That's it right here. And we should be able to tell that the era it was made, not exactly the year. Okay, the first blade looks really good. It just needs to be uh, put a new edge on there and give it a little bit more of a tip, but we can do that, no problem. And this one here, yes sir, that blade's in good shape. Okay, you see that right there? That USA is over to the right. This knife was made all the way from uh, 56 to 1988, but it isn't imperial. With the USA over to the right, right there. Again, 56 to 88. There's no way of telling exactly what year on these knives. Um, it's a solid knife though. Very solid knife. And it does have, uh, the handles are tabbed on or they're clamshell handles. I mean, it is hollow underneath the, the handle here. The bolster and the, the handle are together. So, uh, but it's a very good knife. It sure is, and it snaps out good. And this side here is a little bit loose. Ain't no big deal, but it's a great knife. It really is. But Art, thank you for this, buddy. I appreciate it so much. You know, I've been to uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and I was in the National Park Service. Well, I went through there on the way to uh, Mammoth Cave. I don't know if y'all know about that up there, but uh, it's a big old cave that goes I know well over a mile up underneath the ground because I was down there near the bottom. Uh, I was on this team that I would go out and assess the damages of uh, the national parks at, after natural disasters. And I'd go like for hurricanes, floods, stuff like that. I went all over the uh, southeast. I was part of the southeast region and got to see a bunch of, of, of national parks. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that job as well. Um, but it was very fun. I've got to meet a lot of great folks. And uh, But at the bottom of that cave, there is a river. And that's when it, you know, when it floods, it pushes a bunch of mud up to a long way in the cave. And a lot of people tour that cave. So we had to go in there and assess it and everything and write up work orders, write projects and stuff like that. So. But at the very bottom, there is a, a river, and uh, they used to do boat rides down there. There was a boat at the very bottom, a tour boat at the very bottom. We couldn't get down to it because of the mud, but you could see it down through the rocks with our lights. It was so cool. Uh, but I did not know this, guys, but <clears throat> connected to Mammoth Cave, there's over 300 miles of caves underneath the ground up there. It's just... It's just amazing. I, I never knew that, you know, never knew knew that until I went up there and visited. But if y'all are ever near Bowling Green, Kentucky, Mammoth Cave, if I remember right, it's a little bit north of there. And it's just an awesome, awesome park. Y'all need to check that out. But it's, it's Mammoth Cave in, uh, in Kentucky. It's a beautiful place. Awesome place. All right, thank you for uh, this knife, man. I will get this cleaned up. I sure will, and I'll put it in my October auction. How about that? So, very cool, buddy. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Now, this one here comes all the way from uh, Martinez, George. How about that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this now. Okay, this is a, a knife here that I'm going to be taking apart to repair another knife. I gotta take this apart. Probably won't be able to get to it though for about another two weeks or so. But that is, I'm gonna get done, a lot done with this uh, shop. And I've just got a lot of knives in front of it. So, but uh, I will get this torn apart. But this, uh, that other knife I'm referring to is a gift to another YouTube channel. I'm not gonna expose that right now. Uh, but I will get this torn apart. So, see the blade is, is uh, messed up. And it's a Frontier. And Rubido Creek Outdoors is sending me another part for his granddad's knife. Another knife to break down. And uh, 
Look at that, it's got some engravers on there. But these little uh, Frontier knives, they're, they're made by Imperial, as you can see. Made by Imperial. And uh, there's Frontier right there. See that? Got a little horn right there, up underneath Frontier. They're good knives. I think they were made in the mid-70s all the way to the mid-80s, something like that. Anyway, guys, those are the packages. And uh, we're going to go over there and see if we can't clean this knife up. I think we got time to do that. Okay, guys, what we're going to do, we're going to see how fast we can do this knife. It is uh, 20 after 8 right now on Sunday morning, September the, September the 8th. But you see, this is it close up. See how rusty it is and we're gonna uh got to get that blade open right there but well, we can open this blade we just can't open that blade so we're going to get some pliers and open this up well we're fixing to start again it is about 20 after 8. Okay, it took 10 minutes on that, guys. Now we're going to go ahead and clean out the inside with a sandpaper and a little screwdriver and oil it down. You see the, it's still pitted real bad, but it's still, it's, it's still a great knife. It really is. I love it. Now been almost 17 minutes. All right. Let them tilt them back a little bit, exposing springs. This one is really loose. See that? Okay. My blade has a little bit of snap, but it's loose. Okay, it is now 23 minutes has passed. Not too bad. I love doing this, guys. It's a good little knife. I wonder. See, that blade goes all the way to the end. It's one of somebody's worked on it, but it don't appear to be worked on. Because it does go all the way to the end of that knife. Right there. But these blades are in excellent shape, good and tight. See, this one is even good and tight, and it's sharing that same pin. So that's why I don't know if, if it's the pin or not. It could just be war. It don't appear to be war. I don't know. I might have take it apart, guys. I cannot sit back and wait. We might just have to put new handles on it or glue this one back. But...
Actually, this thing's probably rusted on there. There we go. It's coming. There we go. Look at that. That's what was left of that wrap right there. And look how nasty that is. Yes, sir. Look at that. That one's coming off easy. Okay. Okay, let's see. There we go. Look at that hair and stuff. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I done it. Glad I took this off. That's nasty right there, isn't it, guys? I'm telling whose hair that from. Wow. All right. We're going to take it back over there. But the main thing I was wanting to see is this pin here, see? We're going to tap on that pin just to get that tight. We're going to put a razor blade between the um, pin and this blade here. But, man, I'm glad I took the handles off. I'm going to take that back over there, too. Look at there. That's just nasty, ain't it? <laughs> you never know what you find in a knife, I'm going to tell you. Wow. Okay, guys, it's going to take longer than I thought, so it's a quarter to nine. First of all, I'm going to wipe it down. Get some of that oil off of there that I just sprayed on there. I'm going to get this thing shined up quick like. Then we're going to tap on that blade. Hey guys, it is now uh, 940, or 8.47. So it's been about 27 minutes. We're going to I put that razor blade in there just to give it a, a little bit of space it's down to that pin. We're going to have to tap on that pin just to see if we can't get it a little tighter so that blade won't be so loose. It's tight. It's better, but the main thing is this blade here. Did it get it, it too tight? Cause it was good. It still got a little bit of snap, I think. That's better. No snap though. It was really loose. It might get some of snap back, but it didn't have no snap even when it was loose. So I'd rather it be tight with no snap. You know what I mean? I'm fit to give these some new edges. They're really dull too. Mm-hmm better that one i think it will come back just working it some it's got a little bit of snap still a little tight Hey Siri, what time is it? It's 8.53 a.m. 8.53, okay. So it's been uh, 33 minutes. The only thing I'm going to do off camera, I'm going to take it over there and uh, try to clean the inside of these handles up on the fiber wheel real quick. And I'll be right back, but it is uh, about 8.54 a.m. And we're going to try to clean these up real quick with the wire brush and the fiber wheel all right guys we got them cleaned up all i used was a wire brush on them so let's 
try to get, put them back on now. These are the tops, so we just got to match them up to the shape. That's it right there. So we're going to stick this tab right there into this tab. A tab hole. And then we're going to try to curve that back down and get it good and tight. But this is where they break. You got to be very careful. That one went on good. A little loose. It's a little loose. That's good and tight. Let's hope this one will go on there now. Got to tell you the time. It is about nine o'clock. So I've been at it for 40 minutes. That one there is going to be a little stubborn. There we go. Look at there. Back on there. Ain't that awesome? And they're tight too. They did not break this time, guys. The wobble's gone. There's no snap, which it didn't have no snap to begin with. And this one's a little bit more tighter, but I think it'll work itself loose. We're just gonna give a little bit of oil, see what it does. That one, I know ain't gonna get no snap. But this one might. It's getting there. Gotta be real careful too. I don't know why. You know. Might just have to stick that razor blade down beside that, just like that, and tap on it a little bit. All right, that's better. There, see that. See it. I don't have any wobble in it now. But it ain't gonna have no snap. But again, that blade did not have any snap when it was loose. So we're not even gonna worry about that one. That one was the one I was worried about. It's got a little snap back now. That one's got a good snap. Okay, guys. I'm gonna dry this up a little bit. Wipe it down. Okay, guys, here it is. The Hammer brand made from 1945 to 1955. According to that tank stamp right there. See the USA over to the right? It's just a great knife, guys. I gave them nice new edges, too. And it is now probably about 10 after. So right at, at 50 minutes uh get, getting it cleaned up but i had to take it all the way apart as far as the handles and get them back on there but they're just they went on there too without me having to break the tabs very surprised that but you see that edge right there beautiful knife just good old good old uh carbon steel in these things see that that edge i'm gonna that thing's already sharp but i'm gonna hone it in some more with that work sharp Field guided sharpener that I absolutely love. But this this turned out good, guys. See, there's no more wobble in that blade at all. It's not not uh, loose at all. Got half stop. But these blades turned out good. 
See, that's got a snap back. Great little knife. 50 minutes, not too bad. Well, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the video today. This thing took me 50 minutes, guys, but uh, I didn't think it was going to take that long. I had to take it all, the handles off, and clean the handles up, too. But did you see that water hair underneath there? That was nasty. One, it's amazing what can get under these little crimped on handles. And ain't no telling how long that's been, been under there. Uh, just amazing, amazing what you find in knives sometimes. But I've never found a water hair like that. And how it got down in there, I have no idea. But I got them off and got them back on without breaking the tabs. That's a major accomplishment. But uh, also tighten this blade up, you know. That's a, uh, it, it done really good. Done really good. It cleaned, it cleaned up really good. So I'm proud of it. And I just want to thank Mr. Art for sending this one in. I'll be cleaning this one up uh, very soon. And I want to thank Mr. Uh, Dwayne from Clark's Kentucky Knives for all these great crosses and, and this stuff here. Thank you, man, so much for this. I appreciate it. I really do. And uh, y'all go check out Clark's Kentucky Knives. He's an awesome guy. You'll fall in love with, with him. He's a very, very generous man. And again, you'll be amazed at some of the stuff he buys and finds at, you know, at antique stores and, and garage sales and flea markets. He's a great guy, great guy. Anyway, guys, I just want to thank y'all for tuning in today. I want to say God bless y'all. Two of me again, guys. Have a good night. Stay sharp. Drive through towns, the whispers start, hey. Flea markets called and a treasure hunt today, hey. With Auntie Queen by his side. They search, they barter, take the ride. meets fate He sees a spark in the forgotten Ain't too late A diamond in the rough they say Till the night doctor buffs the years away Through the aisles and past the stands His keen eye sweeps over the merchant's lands Picks up a bladed story untold Edges dull, but the handle's gold. He squints his eyes, sees past the grind. Each knife he saves like stopping time. In every town, a tale of gem. The hunt is on, no need to pretend. Y'all got any knives or anything? Some pocket knives?